Oh, hi! This is part two. And here we're going to be talking about all the freaking forms that you have to fill out in order to be successful. But seriously, don't forget to comment uh, whether it's helpful or if you have any questions and I will make sure to answer all your comments to this particular video. All right, bye. Art is a green card, you guys. One on one. Hey, and we're back. Day two. Is it day two or day one? No one knows. What is letters of recommendation? If you worked on the project and the head of that project was a famous musician, conductor, for instance, take that LOR from him and most importantly, write it for him. Help him to describe you in a way you want to be described for your particular case. Here's why you need uh, letters of recommendation. Basically, it's people with, uh, uh, you know, established people uh, with uh, some accolades or awards or just uh, uh, people who have a, a big heavy weight in the industry that you're pitching yourself in, um, in the green card uh, process. And basically, you're asking them uh, to support you in this, in the process of applying for a green card or any, really any other visa, um, saying that, yes, this person, person is actually, I work with this person, I'm familiar with the work of that person and they are, um, you're okay to give them permission to be here, to work here legally. Um, usually you would reach out, um, you know, if you went to school to your instructors, somebody who's famous, somebody who's um, done uh, a lot of work in the industry, Emmy Award winner. Emmy Award winner. Writer. Screenwriter. That's what I had, for instance. Or we had a letter from uh, Microsoft head uh, person of Insider. Mm -hmm. She's responsible for HoloLens. So those kind of letters have weight, importance in your case. Someone who's Googleable, someone who has presence online, so officer can go and check them out and see that, yes, they are actually working and they are actually are doing um, what you are saying they are doing because you are going to write about that as well. So when you are composing uh, letters of recommendation, you have to include their bio, their works, where they were been featured and everything. And we recommend when you are asking them to write a letter of recommendation or you are writing for them, start with their bio. Start with all the titles that they have, mm -hmm. all the uh, awards that they won or maybe places they worked if it's some, something like Microsoft. Right. Or numerical or like commercial success, for example. So you're showing uh, to the uh, to the USCIS basically that they are experts in the field. Um, by one mean or the other. So for example, you would start usually the first paragraph, you would start with their bio, who they are, where mm -hmm. they worked, what they worked on, for example, the movies they did or produced and the, the box office that the movie collected. Yeah. Then you go to the next paragraph, you, uh, describing how that person knows your work, how they came across your work. And uh, then the next paragraph would say uh, which work specifically they know, um, and then why they think it's incredible, it's important. Uh, and then lastly, they would mention that uh, they think that, uh, for example, Tatiana Kim or Anatoly Ogai are definitely worth getting the green card. The tactic is to have a very strong letter of recommendations, like very, very big people, uh, six to seven letters, um, for example. And then you are sending them in the initial case. And then in case you're getting the RFE, it's not enough of info, you're sending the rest of them, uh, which are also like good weight, good, you know, uh, legit people in the yeah. industry. Basically, you're sa uh, saving the second portion of letters of recommendation of these people to send in in case you're getting the RFE. So get more recommendation letters than you think you might need. Don't be discouraged if someone says no to you. We had a couple of people who were just not comfortable with um, writing such letter and... Or even signing. Even signing, Because, yeah. for example, we never did, we never like, hey, can you actually write a letter for me? That's not, you know, nobody's going to like take, you know, a couple hours of their day, maybe yeah. even more, like three, four hours, because really to craft a good letter, you need some time and some skill too. Uh, and that's actually where usually lawyers 
uh, come in handy. We wrote our letters ourselves um, or based them on some other letters of recommendation. But uh, yeah, definitely pre-write the letter for pre-write. your um, for your um, candidate. But don't be discouraged if they say no. In case they say no, be very polite and thank them and just ask someone else. And don't forget to say thank you to everyone who helped you mm-hmm. to get your green card. I-140. Ta-da! That's the main form. That's something that you fill out. It's it's literally like a legal form that you fill out from their website. Make sure to make a very clear exhibit list. Exhibit list includes all your categories one by one. Within those categories, it includes all the evidence. So every evidence is a subcategory. So when the officer goes through your case, it makes clear sense of where he's going and what leads to what. Mm -hmm. But that's very important how you do it and where to place those tabs and how this should be printed just because they they're accustomed to exactly this way so when you are submitting something else it's just for them irritating i think right that's what we've been yeah. told at least right right basically you're just trying to make the job of the, of the officer mm-hmm. which is already a huge thing you know they have to go through this huge document you're just trying to make it a little bit easier and, and they'll appreciate that. Yeah. So, for instance, we, because we come from branding perspective, we did all our tabs. We printed all the names. We put it in a tab. We attached it to the paper. We didn't just write it with our hands and just something that doesn't make sense. We printed it so they can read it clearly and see it clearly. And so it looks very neat, not confusing. Applying for a green card, it's a two-step process. It could be a one step, but it's a, there are two phases of it. The first one is I-140, the, the main form, the petition itself, and the evidence. And the second phase is I-485, which is adjustment of status. Um, you can submit two forms simultaneously. They call it concurring uh, submission, something like that. Basically, you're submitting both forms simultaneously. We did not do that. For- because we needed to travel. Right, for one reason. No, no, actually for for two reasons. To travel, that's number one. Number two, um, basically if you're submitting two forms, you're saying, okay, here's my documents. I'm okay to stay here. And whatever you guys take in terms of time, you take it, go ahead, and then I'll be waiting. I-140, I-485. It's a two-step process and you can do it in different times or you can do it simultaneously Mm -hmm. but if you are doing it simultaneously it means you have to wait in the country in the u.s until you get your green card or until you get your uh, travel document we applied and then the first step you can actually remember the expedite processing you can actually apply for the i-140 you can uh, pay for expedite processing Uh, premium processing they also call it i think it's 12 50, something like that, mm-hmm. and then they give you the answer in two weeks. So we did that. We decided, okay, we're not going to wait forever because it takes anywhere from six to eight to nine months, and then with the backlog after the pandemic, it would take even more time. So we we're like, okay, let's just. We learned the previous lesson. We're not going to wait for another nine months. Let's just smart. Apply. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we got the answer. We got the answer um, pretty fast. I think in in a, in like seven or seven or nine days. Yeah. We did it separately just because we, yes, we needed to travel Mm -hmm. and uh, we... And also the Trump... uh, Yes. So we applied in a very interesting time, right after election, and we didn't know if Biden going to get rid of uh, some of the executive orders that were proposed by Trump uh, and actually implemented by Trump, Mm -hmm. not even proposed, it was implemented. So we were waiting that Biden will get rid of them in his 100 days plan. And he did. That helped us to return uh, from our travels and apply for the second stage, which is I-485. The first step, which is I-140, was cleared within two weeks. But still, the second adjustment of status, which is maybe in some cases more important than even showing all the evidences that you have. Um, Yeah, and so we went to travel, we came back and immediately applied for I-1. I-485. I-485. The interval between 
the approval of I-140 and applying for uh, adjustment of status, AOS or I-485, they're all the same names, is not, uh, I don't think there is a, a strict limit when, you know, what time you can apply. You can apply the next day, you can apply, I think, in a year or two or three. Um, not sure about the, you know, two or three years, but uh, there's no specific, like, this is when you can apply. You, if you have the approved I-140, you're okay to apply for I-485. Or you can, like we said in the beginning, you can submit them simultaneously together. We're going to go through that. So you know exactly what has to be included and what worked for us. And hopefully it's going to work for you. Right. One, one important thing I think that will, helpful, will be helpful for the officer is to include the table of contents so that they understand what's included in the document and this whole package. Like imagine a thousand page document and you have to like browse through. That's, that's not a nightmare. So a table of contents yeah. would definitely help. Um, so first thing. You have the the title, Original Submission Petition for Alien Worker I-140, based on extraordinary ability in the arts, EB1A. And then if you're applying for any, any other category, uh, I mean, um, you know, major, like scientist or sport, you will write in sports. It is also important to submit the latest, uh, the latest form they have. Usually when you go on USCIS, uh, they have the link to the form, you download the form, and you check that it's the latest form that they have. So if you're watching, you're you are watching this from the future. Definitely check because oh, you might... you're watching it from the future. Yeah. Hi, future. Hello. Next, form I nine o seven request for premium processing service with the two thousand five hundred filing fee. Wow, they raised the price here. They, they did. Yeah, because the pro the pr I thought the premium processing what I, th I think was around fourteen hundred bucks. Well, I think not they anymore. By a thousand. Wow. You have to have money, money, money to apply. Okay. But you can choose not to do the premium processing. Don't forget about it. That was our choice because we are impatient. So that's why we paid with two iPhones <laughs> the premium processing fee. Right. Uh, but uh, keep in mind that it is separate. It's, it is a separate form that you have to fill out. And three. Okay. Yeah. Photocopies of the passport. So literally, you just uh, do the bio page of the passport. O1 forms I-797. Basically, whenever we apply, when we applied for O1 visas, uh, when you receive the, the the permission, the permit to work, right? They send you the I-797, which is the official document for your, from USCIS that says that you are granted um, visa O1, and now you can work in the field of your expertise. Don't forget, so if you don't have a one as we had, or you have F1 visa or any other visa, so what they want to see here is that you are legally present. It is very important to include your visa that you have, we just happen to have a one. What they need to see here is that you are legally present all this time in the United States. That's why it is required to show the form and another form, which is a travel arrival. Mm -hmm which is I-94. Yeah, usually I-94 might include, will include the latest arrival date, the port of entry, uh, when you, when you, where you landed, the airport or the city. Uh, and then also I-94 will include, um, I think up to five years, something like that, your travel yeah. within the United States, your, so, your entry and uh, ent entering and leaving the United States. Yeah, so copy, 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 copy mm -hmm. on your passport. Scan, 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 print, print, print. Don't forget. Four, initial evidence in support of the I-140 immigrant petition. It is the... The most important document. The most important document. It's a letter. In our case, it was a 15-page uh, letter. When we applied for O-1, I think lawyers did a 20-page document. But basically, you're saying, you're outlining whatever you're submitting in this in this huge packet of documents, it you're deserves. doing like excerpts. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The most important thing. So it may be that the only thing that the officer is going to read is going to be this letter of 20 pages. And in that letter of 20 pages, you're going to include all the exhibits, which is the evidence itself. For instance, what is new media production in my case? Storytelling, multi-platform digital communication environment, stuff like that. And then it is in bracket exhibit one. So the officer opens exhibit one and reads 
every evidence that we included about new media production. Right. So in this case, we just wanted to be more, a little bit more helpful, since not everyone might be aware of the term new media. Uh, what is new media producing? What is new media production? So we just wanted to have the first thing, the first exhibit to be what it is. And then uh, from yeah. then on, uh, to have the officer like a clear idea what Tatiana is applying for as a new media producer. So that letter included 40 exhibits for us. So we had 40 pieces of evidence. And might as well that officer only read this letter and it was enough for them to, to make a decision. So you stop form, your payments, da 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 da, your letter, which is called initial evidence, then all the pages that you are that you gathered of the case itself and then also we decided to include um, number five statement from me detailing plans of how i am intending to continue working in the united states it's just nice to have i guess uh, mm -hmm. to have support in this case from all the different directions and so the letter from you can be very personal and you are stating of what are you going to do, what's your plans are. Yeah, you may even include how maybe the US economy might be benefiting from you staying here. Just write it from your heart, I guess. That's what I'm trying to say, but you know what I mean. Also where we mentioned why a green card would, how a green card would help, help you work here and also work internationally. I think we mentioned something about visas, uh, something that, you know, getting a visa every time you go out of the country and then um, you know, it's time wasting, um, resource wasting, and then how green card will help uh, yeah. just, you know, expedite the process, basically. Yeah, for us, we had one year, which we, we traveled to millions, zillion countries uh, in one year. It would be easier if we had a green card, I guess. That's it. Easy. Organized. Amazing. Neat. Um, I think it's mentioned on the USAS website how... Um, you know the, the the ways they accept um, they accept money. I think we did money order, right? Or we did a we cashier's, did cashier's check. check. It's called the cashier's check, which is basically you yeah. withdraw money from your account. It's like it's a five dollar fee, uh, or it costs five dollar at the bank. Uh, you withdraw money from your bank, and then the cashier would put it in a check that is fixed and it's written specifically for USAS, you know, domestic whatever. Um, and then they'll cash it. You will not know when they cash it. So, for example, it's different when you're sending a check from your from your bank. You just write a check and then send it. Or when you submit a, a credit card form or debit card form. So you don't know when they're gonna cash it. But that's you know that's okay. Um, they'll do it eventually. Here comes something that we couldn't find online because we applied for me. Anatoly comes in as a spouse. So stage number two, if you are coming with your relatives, which is your um, children, for instance, and your husband or wife. Not just relatives, immediate family. Immediate family, that's right. right. Yeah. Could be so, a spouse and children. Yeah, so you have to apply adjustment of status for all of them. Mm -hmm. In our case, we had two forms, I-485, for me and for Anatoly. Mm -hmm. But they were almost the same. Almost the same. Almost Just a couple of check boxes here and there. Yeah. Um, but then pretty much like 95% the same. Check the latest fees and don't mess it up because we'll tell you a little funny story how we messed it up and then had to... Uh, did we mess it up? Oh yeah, that we did mess it up. Delayed the process a little bit by a month or so. Month. But yeah. uh, anyway, check the fees and then make it very clear. Uh, and we're, So let's go through a table of contents for... I-485, a.k.a. Adjustment of Status. Number one, payment check in the amount of $1225 uh, made payable to US, U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Same as, you know, same as, uh, uh, same kind of process on the check or a cashier's check, uh, but just a different amount. Number two, G-1145, Electronic notification of application or petition acceptance. You would want to include this form because they will send you a notification on your phone about status of your case. Number three, uh, form I-485, application to register permanent residence or adjust status. Uh, that's 
that's the main form that you're submitting in this, um, uh, you know, at this step. Uh, and that has, it's probably like a couple page form and that we'll go through uh, with you. And it's a little bit different for the uh, petitioner or for the, for the petitioner slash applicant, which is the primary applicant. And then for me as a spouse, I think it's called a derivative applicant. Number four, two passport style photos with name and alien number at the back. Alien number is something you're going to get after you apply for I-140. They will send you the letter. That's your A number for till the end. <laughs> right. Till the end until you get your green card. Even on the green card, you have that A number. Yeah, it, 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 it sticks, with you, sticks with you until you, if you decide to get a passport. Because um, remember, you're alien now. When I was filling out I-485, I did not have the alien number, and that's okay, because you don't have one. They will assign it to you. Number five, copy of passport biographic page. Copy of passport page with visa entry stamp, uh, means the U United States of America visa, uh, and the entry stamp. So keep in mind, because usually there's the visa, and then they do a stamp when you actually enter it, and then they, I think they write something, their own coding, uh, when you're supposed to leave the country or whatever. So you can have those copies as well. Number seven, copy of birth certificate um, with certified translation. You're submitting the copy of your birth certificate from your home country and then the translation, the translation of it, and then the certificate of translation. So three piece. Number eight, copy of form I-94, arrival departure record. You can get it online. Just type in, get your latest form. It's very easy. Just copy print screen and print it. Yeah, I think you just need your uh, name, one. date of birth, yeah. and um, and passport number. It's really easy, really easy. It's all in the system already. Because you're applying, most probably you're from non-English speaking country, although you might be, you know, Canada, whatever, Australia. But if you're... Uh, if you're like well, us. If you're like us applying for a non-English speaking country and you have all your evidence in a different language, in our case it was Russian language, um, you are you have to submit a translation of the document and then you have to submit a certificate of translation. You have to, it's, it's very, very easy. There's no notary, there's no yeah. such stuff like, for example, like in Kazakhstan, they would ask for, for something with a stamp or something like that, nothing like that. So for example, a, a translation certificate is literally a friend of mine, in our case, it was Julia, thank you. Uh, she is saying in this letter, hi, I'm Julia. I'm fluent both in I'm Russian. I'm fluent both in Russian and English. And I certify that this document, name of document, is uh, translated correctly. Date, signature. And you have to do that translation certificate to every evidence that is not in English. Evidence in English then you do the translation and after that you put the certificate that this article was translated correctly we had about i don't know 20 40 mm -hmm. probably remember, 40 around 40 certificate of translation mm -hmm. we had to go translate everything and uh julia would sign the certificate and we would include that translation itself and the certificate, the certificate. yeah yeah so anytime you're pr providing an interview an article, a review that is not in English language, you have to submit a translation and the translation certificate. Number nine, copy of approval notice for I-797, which means that you are applying, uh, because we applied separately the two-step process, so we had the I-140 approval notice, which is AKA I-797, lots of digits. So you have to submit that as well um, as a proof that you were approved. Number 10, copy of evidence of continuous lawful status in the U.S. F1, OPT, O1 in our case. Sometimes it says notice of action, which means that USA has started working on something. Or sometimes it says notice of approval, which means, for example, on I-140, mm -hmm. I think it said notice of approval, which means that I-140 was approved. Lawful status, the continuous lawful status, yeah. So this is very important to make sense for, for the officer, for probably the new officer, uh, who will be dealing with your um, with you, with this form with this packet to to see that you never um, compromise your status by anything that you never was present unlawfully in the U.S. If you had been present unlawfully in the U.S., it is very very recommended to get a lawyer and it's probably a different kind of scenario. Number eleven, 
uh, sealed medical examination form I-693. Another option is not obligatory to send it um, together with I-485. You can send it later when they mm -hmm. send you the notice actually to do that. Yeah. We decided that there is an option to do that uh, in advance and we decided to do that. So for the medical examination, you have to go to USCIS.gov website and find their designated medical examiner. So that would be someone working in your neighborhood that is allowed to uh, do that examination and pack it for USCIS. It's not just like random hospital or random doctor. So go online, put in your uh, zip code and do that. Mm -hmm. Or if you're outside, I think they have, if you're outside, in terms they're, of the country, the consulate. yeah, they have, uh, in the, on the consulate website, they have their own um, certified medical examiners. They may require you to do a vaccination if you are due to have this vaccination in the U.S. For instance, maybe it's not due in your country, but it is due here in the U.S. So do it, even though it is a very controversial right. topic, especially now. Oh, oh, here's here's the thing. We found, so we, call, we called a couple of doctors, a couple of offices, and then check the prices, check whatever they need, uh, because we had our own vaccine cards from Kazakhstan. So we had a couple of vaccines that we didn't have to do. And some offices we called and asked, can we do a vaccine and show you our vaccine card to skip some vaccines, basically. And they said, no, no, no. Some offices said, no, you can't do it. You have to do everything with us. And that's how it's going to cost. And some offices, uh, you know, the price was too high or whatever. But we found one office here in West Hollywood that did accept our, it actually was a Russian office. Um, and they said, okay, bring in your vaccine card. We're not going to give you, we're going to, you know, consider your vaccines. And then we're also going to subtract the cost. So we, we saved like maybe a hundred bucks or something like that because it cost around, I think, 200 or 250 per person to do these, to do this step separately. So what is vaccine card? It's the vaccine card from the childhood. It looks like something for us, something that was done in Soviet Union. It's all by hand, but they can read it. So just ask your parents if you still have it or maybe grandparents. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But if you don't, no, no worries. It's all, it's all easy. I mean, it depends if you have a, a insurance or not. It's going to cost more or less. Um, but everything you can get pretty easy yeah. here in the United States or abroad. The last one is signed statement confirming my intent to work in the occupational field specific to the form I-140, new media producer. Again, it is a statement, personal statement, uh, which just once again tells them that you want to work here and stay here and live here and that you're a good person. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's I think it's the same statement from the first step. Might be tweaked a little bit in terms of like, hey, I was approved for I-140, but it's pretty much like yeah, the same the same letter. And that's it, guys. Four steps. It is quite a process. But um, yes, if you're organized and you put a little bit of uh, effort every day gathering everything, then I think you can achieve that in like two, three months. Mm -hmm. But it depends on how long are you waiting for your letters to arrive. Letters right. of recommendation. Um, but yeah, sometimes for people, letters of recommendation are the hardest to get. Um, and they wait for like four months until the person uh, answers them. And meanwhile, you can gather everything and prepare and print and do amazing job in packaging it. Mm -hmm. But put everything on the schedule. Like... Um... You know, do, don't just do it kind of casually or unless that's the plan, but put it like, uh, put it on the schedule and have a, have a like specific plan, times what you will be doing this. And don't think that it's, it's going to be a breeze. It's not, it's definitely not a breeze because it's a lot of work, a lot of stress, a lot of like doubting. It's like, um, a lot of reaching out to people and asking mm -hmm. for favors and stuff like that, which is and it's all okay. okay. Just do all of it. Just do all of it for your own sake. And people are very glad to help you guys. Um, but just, just what we've learned that people are very open in mm -hmm. helping. So yeah. Right. Um, um, yeah. Do massive action. But I mean, if you're an artist and you're already here wanting to apply for green card, hopefully you are um, aware of your time and your organizational skills. So you're just going to make it work. 
as if it is your personal artistic project. When you're applying for I-485 or adjustment of status, you can actually apply for two more forms. Number one, I-765, which is the work authorization document. It's a separate form. Uh, you have to, uh, you know, fill it out and send it in uh, together. You can file it concurrently, which means together with the I-485. And basically, it will grant you work permit until you receive the decision from USCIS. Uh, which is amazing because uh, it can take two years for them to get yeah, back to you. Yeah, it depends on the you know on the timing on your specific case or the 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 place where you're applying. It might take shorter short time. It might take longer. So you might want to apply when the time comes. For example, you apply in January first. Six months is on um, Ju June first. Uh, so on June second, you might go ahead. Call USAS and say, "Hey, my case is lingering. Here's my case number. Once you, uh, you know, send the I-140 or whatever I-485, uh, they will send you the receipt uh, form, which says, "Hey, we received your case. We're working on it." And they have the receipt number. And when you call USAS, you say, "Hey, my case is, has been uh, has been with USAS for six months. Is there any way I can get the employment authorization document so I can work here?" Which is amazing because otherwise, if you don't have a uh, you know a valid work visa like a one or H one B or whatever, you're you're not able to apply, or or you're not able to work mm -hmm. legally in the U S. And it is a very f easy form. It is self explanatory. There is nothing tricky there, so we really advise you to apply for that one. Mm -hmm. Also, apply for another form, which is a travel travel document I one three one, which is. They describe it as an emergency situation. So if you do have emergency and you have to leave the country while you're uh, you're still waiting, still waiting while your USAS is still, uh, you know, examining your um, adjustment of status document form, you can leave the country and then come back. Well, actually, you can leave the country, no problem. But the coming back is the problem without this document. And here's another very important thing to say: once you submit I four eight five the adjustment of status form, you cannot just leave the country and then come back. If you leave the country, it, they will uh, think that your case is abandoned. It will go automatically in the system. It's like you just abandoned the case, nothing happened, you paid no fees, there is no refund, no nothing. They just You just have to start from scratch from I-140, actually. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Don't start from, from the Hopefully. top. Is that it? I think that's mostly it. If you have any questions, we'll try to answer. Yeah, leave us a comment. I hope we helped you to get your green card. Go check out our work <laughs> that we've been talking about. Good luck. You can do it. You actually can do it. You can actually do it. We are proof that you can do it. Yeah. Real life awaits and it was nice chatting with you, but we gotta go. Yep. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thanks for watching till the end and I hope, I really hope this was helpful and maybe, maybe it feels like it's a lot of information, but honestly, it's not that much when you actually sit down and start doing and putting your hours into getting your dream become true. And it's a very noble dream, I think, to be a artist and get get your work um, be seen here in in the US and I wish you good luck subscribe and like us and please help us grow <laughs>